You know him. Even if you don't think you know him, you do. He's the voice of the Kool-Aid Man. He's done voices in Milo Murphy's Law and One Punch Man. And he's even voiced Drac in the video games for Hotel Transylvania. Okay. And he's played Doc Brown. That's right, Marty. But we're here to talk about Salem. And more specifically, Bigfoot. Hey guys, I hope you're doing well. If you're under stay-at-home orders like we are here in California, stay clean, wash your hands, stay positive, smile through it, and subscribe to Piper's Picks TV. No, really. Subscribe. Gives you extra content to watch. And please make sure to hit that notification bell, whether it works or not, because it's super important to us here, and we like to make sure to respond to whoever the first comment is, the first person watching. We like to see all that, and we keep track of it. So, notifications bell, y'all. So, Salem. If you haven't seen my interview with the awesome creator Sam Sawyer yet, Salem is about a non-binary cryptid named Salem. For the uninitiated, we did describe cryptid in that interview, so I'll link it in the description and at the end of this video. Brock plays Bigfoot in Salem. Apart from being an awesome voice actor and face actor, he's also a really funny and nice guy. We got a lot to talk about, so let's jump into the interview. Hey guys, it's me, Piper East from Piper's Picks TV, and I'm here with Brock Powell, who is Bigfoot on a new series called Salem. So what can you tell me about Bigfoot? Well, first of all, you know, Bigfoot's very elusive, uh, and our Bigfoot loves blueberry muffins. So that is actually something I have in common with Bigfoot. So I know that Salem is non-binary. Does Bigfoot have a gender on the show? Interesting. I don't know that we've discussed it. I, I think that Bigfoot is Bigfoot, but I... No, I. Th that's a great question. I think Bigfoot identifies as Bigfoot. Do you believe that Bigfoot is real? Oh yeah. Have you seen anything, any signs or anything? Uh, I've, I've not personally, but we recently had a. We have an actual cryptozoologist who's helping us prepare to keep the uh, our interpretation of our characters, and especially with the cryptid uh, cryptozoology elements. Um, we have an actual expert on Bigfoot who came and did a whole, like, we had a whole, like, hour That's together. Awesome. Uh, and he made me a big believer. So, <laughs> yeah. So, what exactly did you have to do in order to audition for the Kool-Aid Man? Oh, great question. <laughs> um, so, the Kool-Aid Man audition, I actually auditioned for uh, two different rounds, and they ended up not selecting me till the second time. <laughs> And so they is, didn't call you back and then they, they selected you? And then they, they had a second set of auditions and they decided that on the audition they had said they were looking for something similar to Will Ferrell and I think Macho Man Randy Savage. Because the, the original Kool-Aid Man voice um, has that really low tone and he sang and it was like, you know, oh yeah, like that really low thing. But when they brought him back and they wanted to sort of revitalize him for a new generation, they wanted something that was a little... I guess without meaning to do a pun, like punchier. So they were looking for, oh yeah, like a little, a little bigger, a little brighter. Um, and uh, that was super fun to get to do that. So you didn't have to like choreo choreograph or anything for the Kool Aid Man. Uh, no, no, I didn't. Although my grandmother is still convinced I wear the suit when I do that. But oh I, I no! But the audition, they actually had us do, oh yeah, on a bunch of different actions because the Kool Aid Man, I joke, is kind of like the the hodor of advertising because he only says those two words. And uh, so they wanted me to jump on a trampoline. Uh, oh, no. Yeah, right? Uh, but not physically, just in, in the action, as if I was. Right. So doing, oh, yeah, like you're underwater, doing, oh, yeah, like you're fighting off squirrels. So, like, they <laughs> like wanted you're to fighting see, off squirrels. Yeah, that's sure. normal. Oh, yeah. Yeah, of course. <laughs> very, very weird. Um, and I feel like that's helped prepare me, you know, a, a big jug of punch to play a big cryptid. It's helpful. Interesting. Yeah. So if you were Canadian, would you not be sorry? <laughs> Oh, you know, if I was Canadian, I got to be uh, Dr. Not Sorry on Milo Murphy's Law, which by now uh, will be available, I think, on Disney Plus, right? We could probably say that. Who was right? the hardest to work with on Milo Murphy? Well, come on, Swampy. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. Uh, uh, the, the I know that's not true. No, not at all. Everybody was a blast to work with. Um, I think the hardest thing I had to do on Milo Murphy's Law was I did... Um, I was very lucky because I got to do creature voices with the Bradley Baker. Like, oh, I, that's awesome! So, so we both provided a lot of creature sounds throughout the show, and so if if an alien isn't D, it's me, which is really cool. Um, and there was one session where he'd already come in and done a bunch of dog sounds, and I had to do. Uh, I believe it was Milo Murphy for DOG, right? Here yeah, so he does DOG. Uh, but there was an episode of season two, Rock Walker Runner Screamer, I think it was, where Milo has okay. to go walk a bunch of different dogs. Yes. And all those dogs had to be voiced by actors. Oh, so no. so D came in and did his half of the dogs, and then I had to do some other dogs. 
and keeping all the dog bark separate and then all the dogs had to like burp so you had to keep it distinct so that was really challenging yeah that sounds like a lot because there were a ton of different dogs and you were just splitting them in half well well so we there were different dogs so there was a poodle there was a german shepherd and a saint bernard and so we had to like did you method act for that i did yeah i didn't uh i took myself on walks uh i taught myself how to speak Wow, that was so realistic, and your mouth didn't even move. I'm also a ventriloquist, I should mention. I love <laughs> That's how you know you've made it. Because when, when uh, we were practicing Bigfoot sounds, the cryptozoologist was here, and the dog, <laughs> Jasper, who's off camera, um, was starting to like respond when I was doing the sounds. Oh, no. So you know, I think that, like, to me, that's a compliment. Right, yeah, that makes yeah. sense. So I should also say I have a leg up or a paw up on, um, paw up. if you will. On dog sounds, because my voiceover mentor is Bill Farmer, who does the voice of Goofy and Pluto for Disney. Oh, my God. So he actually came into that That's episode. That's amazing. And, and supervised the dog sounds. Okay, so if you worked with him, can you answer the question that everyone is wondering? Why can Goofy talk and Pluto can't? Um, I, I'm not the authority on that. I would say that, in my opinion, uh, Goofy can talk because... That's a goofy thing to do. It's like... <laughs> that makes sense. He's got something to say. I I'll accept it for now. I'll have yeah. to fact check, but yeah. Maybe at some point you'll get to interview Bill and you can ask him because yeah. I think that he'd give you, the, give you the heads up on that. <laughs> After playing an angry Canadian, are you looking forward to playing a cryptid? <laughs> I am. I am. Actually, I think the angry Canadian is a cryptid because I have never seen one. Interesting. You've yeah. never seen an angry Canadian. No, I've heard about them. I've heard, I've heard rumor of angry Canadians, but I've never <laughs> had a sighting. So if they you, always seem nice. Right. That's the yeah. thing. So if you personally have had an experience and an encounter with an angry Canadian, please find me. Yes, I'm on comment. Twitter. Yeah, <laughs> comment here. Find me. Brock Talks. Brock Vox. Find me on the streets. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know anything about a new Bakugan series? I cannot comment on that at this time. I'll keep it between me and the internet. It'll be really quiet. Oh, yeah. yeah. Uh, I, I've seen the same IMDb credit above my name that you have. I don't know what it's Interesting. for yet, so. Interesting. Yeah. Uh, I will say that sometimes what's interesting is things happen and and credits are added there before they've happened. Um, but then I've so had, you're not even confirmed for it. I won't say that I I. I so you are confirmed for it, but you can't tell oh, me. Wow, she's really good at this. <laughs> um, I will say that there was this credit on my IMDb that is not what I've worked on, so it's possible that there. So that, you've worked on something else that's new that you can't talk about. Ooh, yes. Yes, okay. very good. Yes. Beautiful. Thank yeah. you. Yeah, of course. <laughs> when they called you about the Kool-Aid man role, did they pick up the phone and say, hey, Kool-Aid? <laughs> they did not, but I did say, oh, yeah. Did so, you really? Yeah. I mean, That's it was awesome. funny because that I say that a lot, and now you become very aware of like saying things like, oh, I know what you Are mean. you the Kool-Aid man? You're, oh, yeah. When you're you like, see it in a script, you think about it more when you're saying it in real life, I feel I, like. I do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's just one of those fun things that like, it's such an iconic character, and and although you know, I've done, I got to do it for such a short time. In, in the length of how long that character's been around, um, it's such a fun, it makes people happy. So it's a really cool thing to break out, to just go, oh yeah! And especially because there's a Funko Pop. Um, so I've been really fortunate because I've gotten to do a bunch of signings. And right now Funko just opened a store in Hollywood and there's a huge Kool-Aid Man Funko there. Yeah. So it's like, just makes me smile. Like the Kool-Aid Man. So there you go. <laughs> What's your favorite horror movie? Uh, so my all-time favorite horror movie is, it's a split. So I really love Descent. I haven't um, seen that. Oh my one. gosh, it is so is good. Is it a classic? It is not considered like classic, um, but like 2000, okay. I want to off the top of my head, I think it came out probably 2006 or 2007. That does not count as a classic. It's a, well, to me it does, but it's it uh, is a group of of girls who go on a hiking trip and uh, a woman has to overcome a tragedy and fight uh, her inner demons and possibly actual demons in a cave. And it's amazing. That it's is great, interesting. Yeah, it really, it deals with grief in a really cool way. And then the other film I really like is The Witch, which came out just a couple I didn't ago. see that either. It's so good. See, I try to watch the older ones mostly before I watch the newer ones. Okay. I watched Friday the 13th, Nightmare wow, on Elm Street, I mean, I love Halloween. This. Well, I actually watched the newer version of Halloween. Oh, yeah, that's But I did, um, I did like it a lot. Yeah. Scream I'm a big fan of because it wraps up the whole genre. I do love Scream. Yes. Scream is great. I love uh, Cabin in the Woods is another favorite because it's like very, have you seen that, that one? It's on my list. Oh, wow. Did it. you watch Human Centipede. I couldn't do it. I did. I couldn't I, watch I, it. I unfortunately have seen the Human Centipede. Unfortunately, uh, yeah. I read up the ending and no spoilers. There's, there's, but well, <laughs> there's much. I couldn't there. watch it because of that. It's heavy. Yeah. Is Bigfoot bionic, and will we be seeing Lee Majors on the show? <laughs> 
<laughs> That's hilarious. Uh, I, I really wish that we would have Lee Majors on the show. He has not returned our phone calls as far as I know. And I think he costs about, well, not $6 million, but <laughs> different guy. But yeah. Uh, no. Um, Bigfoot is not bionic, and I really wish that we could get Lee Majors. Did you watch the Kim Possible episode on Bigfoot? I have seen the Kim Possible episode. I've seen the Futurama episode. Uh, I also love We Bear Bears that has Bigfoot, voiced by Jason Lee. Scooby-Doo? I've seen Scooby-Doo. Was, was Bigfoot on that? I think so. Yeah, I remember a Bigfoot. I feel like he probably was. Yeah, yeah, he definitely was. I remember it was like a snowy episode, I think. So now that you're Bigfoot, if you ever go on Expedition Everest in Florida's Disney World, will you try to scare the Yeti? Oh, that's interesting. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, we'll talk to each other. That one's actually very scary. Harold is the name of the Bigfoot, the abominable snowman in the Matterhorn at Disneyland. And the Florida he, one's scarier. The, I, I, I disagree. This one is really... really they. I think they changed... The Matterhorn the, isn't scary. The, the volume gets me. The, that Yeti is very loud and scary. I think it's scary because the car... The, oh, because... Yeah, it's actually, yeah. The ride isn't as stable. That's yeah. why it's scary. Because well, it's actually... Yeah, yeah, that's interesting. Can you tell me about some other projects you've worked on? Uh, sure. I got some really cool things in the works right now that I can't talk about, but I can tell you that I've been very lucky to uh, have been a part of the most recent God of War as one of the villains, which was really cool. I'm in a, a game called Sekiro as the voice of Hanbei the Undying, um, which was so much fun to do because that uh, that company that made that game had, uh, the previous game was called Dark Souls, and they're incredibly challenging and frustrating, and they created my character to help aid the players uh, with uh, in their task of trying to like go through these really difficult games. So it's really fun because my character got to be very snarky, which is really cool. Um, and <laughs> Snarky's then, always cool. <laughs> super good, yeah. And then of course, yeah, um, I most recently worked on Milo <laughs> Murphy's Law, <laughs> Big Hero 6. I'm in um, an upcoming couple episodes of Mickey's Mixed Up Adventures, which is on Disney I Channel. So it's gonna be really cool. And then uh, I also did um, one Punch Man. So what are your favorite voices to do? Uh, I love doing creature voices and animal sounds. Um, pigs are always really fun because they're very expressive with the, uh, you know, getting to do all that kind of stuff. That's funny. Uh, yeah, and I, uh, I <laughs> love to do camels when I can. And I also do, I do a camel sound, which you don't get as much call for. You know, can we get a camel on sale? <laughs> um, and I do what I call the fat bumblebee, which is, if you hold the mic, is one of my favorites. <laughs> Funny. Yeah, there you go. So here's a question. If you got to pick a character of Looney Tunes to voice, which character would it be? That's a great question. Um, I love Taz. Um, so that would probably be... Can you do your best Taz impression? Uh, sure. <laughs> uh oh. Taz, sorry. That's awesome. There you go. That's awesome. Yeah. Thank you so yeah, much. Of course. So what do you think? Are you excited to see the new Salem series? I know I am. And what'd you think of the interview? Let us know in the comments down below. And remember to watch for those weekly live chats we just started doing, 4 p.m. here on the West Coast and 7 p.m. on the East Coast on Thursdays. Notifications will be on Instagram. Links in the description. Stay safe, keep smiling, and watch Piper Spix TV. Bye. I'm pretty sure our set is now haunted because this is like our fifth time filming this intro. What? Okay. Are we really pulling that poop? Over there. Oh, Way over there. My energy's like plummeting now. That's the issue. Check him out. They're over there. Yes, I did. Oh my goodness. Oh my god. Why can't I get this right? Y'all Floridians. I.E. Bigfoot. Wait, why did I say I.E.? Where did that even come from? What? We're filming. That third one. I keep forgetting that third one. Ugh. <laughs> okay. Oh, all right. I'm having enough trouble saying when we're doing it. Sorry, my bangs are getting in my eyes. Let me do that again. That was awful. Why is this so difficult? One more time. Oh, sorry. Why? That was perfect. Ugh. One more time. Can I change how you wrote it? All right. Hold on. Dad, you're just reading and you're not giving me an actual line to say. Saying is really difficult. Hi guys, how's it going? Just want to let you know the secret info here. <laughs> See, you can't even do it! <sighs> okay. What, you, Dad, what are you looking for? Oh my goodness! Hold on! <sighs> You're not doing anything wrong, my brain's literally just not picking it up. Y'all will love it. Just trust me. This so. is the end. Uh, dun dun dun.